Hello, my name is Krzysztof Czaplanski, and you are watching MPROMT series with the Kosciuszko Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm very happy. I'm going to first talk about the Chopin competition in 1985, and I wanted to talk to you about your preparation. Can you tell me about your path to the Chopin Piano competition in 1985? Well, it, it all started when I was 10 years old, and uh, with the victory of Christian Zimmerman in 1975. And I just had the dream uh, uh, to maybe repeat it in the future. <laughs> and, uh, and what I started doing, I started learning all those pieces. Uh, my teacher, Janina Butor, she was just... Uh, <laughs> she, she was just killed by it because uh, all those things were too difficult for me and uh, she didn't want to allow me to play all those things. Uh, and I was practicing E minor concerto, which was forbidden. She, she told me that I will develop all kinds of bad habits if I, if I do it at that time, because my hand was weak, small, I was uh, very skinny, no, no energy. My fingers were called sausages by her. But in the end, uh, she started working uh, on those pieces with me, and. Over all those years, until 1985, I had the whole competition repertoire ready two, three years before the competition. I was encouraged by Professor Andrzej Ashinsky when I was already studying with him to learn way more than it was needed for the competition because I was getting a little bored with this repertoire playing it for so many years. <laughs> so this was this was the story. I, I was living with this idea for 10 years and uh, yeah and finally finally it happened. There are so many temptations in, in our lives these days. Uh, you can become this, you can become that. Uh, uh, we have a lot of noise around us. We have uh, computers, we have internet, we have YouTube, we have uh, other media. We didn't have all that. We had just music score, our knowledge about the style, about the composer. Uh, about the periods in music history, and we were trying to develop our ideas thoroughly studying this music, bar after bar, note after note. The majority of young people are, they want quick results. They want to take shortcuts. Uh, they want to have a template which they can follow. And uh, they are listening too much uh, to things that are on YouTube, and very often they even don't know what to listen to. There are very precious things there and fantastic uh, recordings, but, but sometimes they are just following simply anybody. <laughs> and, uh, and this is a problem. Today, uh, people want to play right away Rachmaninoff third piano concerto. Often don't, they don't even know how to finger E flat major scale. So something is happening wrong. In my time, we've been developing all kinds of skill, skills gradually. We've, we were growing with it. And when we were ready, our teachers were telling us, okay, now you can touch this, you can touch that. So physically, technically, mentally, we've been prepared already for that. 
and there was nothing too difficult to deal with. I see a lot of bad habits uh, being developed because we are jumping on too difficult repertoire too soon. But what can we do? Old dinosaurs like me uh, are very unpopular. And now let's connect with the youngest generation of musicians. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which I gladly do, which I gladly do. Let's listen to Antoni Kleczek, the first prize winner of the 2018 Kościuszko Foundation Chopin Competition for Young Pianists, as well as the youngest participant of the 2019 Chopin Piano Academy in Washington, D.C.
interested in how you prepared for the Shogun International Piano Competition, such as how many years before the competition do you start putting together the program? What was your biggest hurdle to overcome? And do you have any advice for students like me? How old are you now? I'm 13. 13. Oh, you still have time. <laughs> so after victory of Christian Zimmerman. Uh, I was so enchanted with his playing and I wanted to, to become another laureate of the same competition. So it took me 10 years. The greatest difficulty I had answering your second question was my laziness. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you are asking me for advice, my goodness, I hear, I hear so many good things in your playing already and you are only 13, so I'm, I'm curious where it, where it will all go in a matter of a few years, because we, at some point we are maturing pretty quickly, and uh, I think if you will be, if you will be uh, very picky, <laughs> that would be my first advice, be really very picky, when you work and study music thoroughly and always trying to understand what composer wanted to say, developing your technique and being consequent, practicing well and never doing the same mistakes many times. My teacher was saying that if you do mistakes once, it is normal, we are humans. The second time is a warning and the third time she was calling a stupidity. <laughs> Do you like teaching or you prefer performing? I love teaching when I am doing this. Uh, when I'm already in the process, I, I, I just am losing myself. I lose sense of time. But when you give me two things to select from, to pack my case and head to perform somewhere or head to, to the classroom, of course, I am packing my case and already on my way. Recently, um, we lost the one of the most prominent composers uh, in Poland. And I know you have worked with uh, Mr. Penderecki. Um, and I was wondering, what are your thoughts on, on that loss? What are your thoughts about him and uh, your memories of collaboration with him? I played with uh, under direction of, uh, of Maestro Penderecki quite quite many times but interestingly uh he never wanted to play with me his piano concerto uh i had this piece on my music stand for quite a while i was studying it and learned but whenever there was a chance to perform together he wanted to play either Beethoven or chopin with me <laughs> this is this is so so unusual <laughs> he inspired me and in many ways, when we were doing those pieces together, um, uh, I, I remember him. Uh, we we were not very close uh, friends, but uh, I will never forget when I moved to Calgary. Christoph Penderecki asked me, uh, "Do you still live in Calgary?" I said, "Yeah." So boring. <laughs> 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 but going back to Maestro, you know, I am never coping well when we are losing someone uh, of this caliber. It's uh, very difficult to to even say something because I think uh, there are no such words which I could use to describe this loss. And uh, because I knew them quite well, it's hard. But I will always have have him and uh, and his wife Elzbieta in my in my memories, and uh, Elzbieta is still with us. And uh, well, this is one of the hardest 
things in our lives, I I probably will never be able to to just accept. Do you think we'll ever be able to go to the pre-quarantine life, or this is something that will change the performing uh, arts forever? I want to believe that one day we will be going back to normal, but uh, I think that everything we are going through now, everything we are experiencing, discovering and reorganizing will definitely influence everything we do in the future. Let's hope that we can we can go back to where we were before.